In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a polynomial function by factoring. If we are going to factor, that means that these polynomials are going to be quadratics. All right, so how do we solve by factoring in four steps? We're going to set the equation equal to zero. We're going to factor the polynomial, whether it's on the left or on the right side of the equal sign. We're going to set each factor equal to zero. So once we factor, we have some type of polynomial times polynomial. Each of those, we're going to set them equal to zero. And then we're going to solve for the variable those two different times. Quick reminder how to factor when the uh, when in a trinomial when the leading coefficient is one. All right, so we, make, we want to make sure that A is positive to make things easier for us to factor. It's not necessarily uh, something you have to do. When I look for two factors of C, our coefficient, I'm sorry, our constant, when I look for two factors of our constant that combine to make B, which is our linear term. Once we found those two numbers that multiply to get C that combine to make B, those two numbers or those two factors are each going to belong in a binomial with their respective signs. Example one, we are asked to solve the equation by factoring. First thing we want to do is set this equation equal to zero. So in order to do that, I added 18 to both sides of the equation. This is my zero got 18 is not a like term with these two, so that's why I have a trinomial. All right, this is one right here, so that means I'm looking for two numbers that multiply give me positive 18. This is going to be side work. Let me put it over here for the side. And I'm looking that they combine to make negative 9. Okay, so 1 times 18. Since they're both positive, this makes 19. That won't work. 2 times 9. 2 plus 9. That is equal to 11. It's still not negative 9. 3 times 6, that is 9, but we want negative 9. But since this is positive 18, we also need to take into consideration the negative numbers. Since we already have 9, right, negative 3 times negative 6, let's use our negatives. Negative times negative is positive. Negative 3 plus negative 6, that equals to negative 9. So this is the one that this don't work. This is the one that does work. So these are the two numbers, negative 3 and negative 6, that belong into our binomials. So here's a variable, z minus 3, z minus 6 equals to 0. All we've done from here to here is just change the way that this looks into this here. Now that I have my two factors set each equal to zero, and solve for the uh, the variable z. So this here is our final answer right there. z is equal to 3, or z equals to 6. So whenever we substitute 3 or 6, 3 in for both of these z's, or 6 in for these two z's, that result is going to give us negative 18. Example 2 is asking us to find the zeros, or the zero, of this function f of t equals negative t squared minus 11t minus 30. Pretty much this is the same thing 
as finding as x intercepts. Roots or solutions. All right, so what we're going to do is set this equal to zero and solve for t again because we're looking for zero, so that means set this equal to zero and solve for t. So we're going to make this into a positive t squared to make our work easier to do. All right, so I am going to multiply everything by negative 1. And I am going to get t squared plus 11t plus 30 is still equal to 0. So now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply and give me 30. And so they need to combine to make 11. 1 times 30 is 31. That won't work. Negative 3 times negative 10 will have to be negative because the result is positive when multiplied. That itself is negative 13 when I combine them. So uh, what about 5 times 6? Yeah, that works. So 5 and 6, they're both positive. So that means t plus 5 and t plus 6 equal to 0. Set each binomial equal to 0. And we get that t equals negative 5 or t equals negative 6. Now we're going to factor trinomial when the leading coefficient is not 1. In order to do that, we're going to multiply a and c. This is going to create our fake trinomial. Now using the fake trinomial, we're going to look for two factors of ac that combine to make b. Each of those factors belong in a binomial. After that, we're going to divide each factor by a. We're going to reduce if possible. And then if it's uh, if we still have a fraction, the denominator is going to be multiplied with the variable for that binomial. Right? Uh, there are different names to this here. Right? Uh, I like calling the end result of bottoms up because whatever we have at the bottom as our denominator comes to the top to multiply with the variable. So here is the example to that. We're going to solve the equation by factoring. Again, we're finding a solution. That's what we are solving. So we're going to set our function equal to 0. 3p squared plus 5p minus 8 equals to 0. What step have I done to get from here to this step? I have subtracted 8 to both sides. All right, since this is no longer 1, I cannot say multiply to get negative 8 and combine to make 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide and multiply. Slide the 3 and multiply with the negative 8. That is going to create a fake polynomial of p squared minus 5p minus 24 equals to 0. Right, we said a fake polynomial, right? We're going to use this to help us solve up here. Right, so this is, in a way, this is side work. So now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply, give me negative 24, and combine to make positive Five. 2 times negative 12, that combines to make negative 10, so that won't work. Alright, so another thing, we want the bigger number to be positive because our result has to be positive. Um, 
6 times negative 4, that is positive 2, that went too far, two, uh, 3, what times 3, in this case negative 3 is negative 24, 8 times negative 3 is 24, 8 minus 3 is positive 5, so these are the two numbers, so p plus 8 times p minus 3. So these are the two binomials. Again, I said we're going to divide by the number we used to slide, which was 3. Divide this by 3. Divide this by 3 and reduce if possible. I cannot reduce the 8 and the 3. So that stays like that. Negative 3 and 3, that does reduce to make negative 1. What was left of a fraction, right, which is the 8 thirds, this denominator comes and multiplies with that p. So now this becomes 3p plus 8 and p minus 1. So this factored is 3p plus 8, p minus 1, that equals to 0. Are we done? No, we're not done because we're asked to solve, meaning we need to find out what variable when I plug, what is the value of the variable when I substitute in here, that result is going to be 8. We're almost done here. Set each equal to 0 and solve for p. Three p equals negative eight. P is equal to negative eight thirds, or p equals one. Now this is our final answer. Last example: the height of a model rocket that is fired into the air can be represented by the equation h equals negative t squared plus 64. How long does the rocket stay in the air? I forgot to mention what h and t represent. h represents the height off the ground the rocket is, and t represents the time in seconds of how long the rocket is staying in the air. For this purposes, right, we're saying height is in feet and time is in seconds. So in order to understand this, we are going to do a little sketching. So here's my ground. All right, here is my height, so I can measure it, right? The height and the rocket is at zero, so that means that this rocket or it was launched all right the height and the time is zero it's going to get launched and it's going to travel something like this all right so this is negative 16 t squared plus 614. It's going to ask us, how long does it take to stay in the air? It's going to stay in the air until it touches this over here as well, right? H equals to zero. What is this other time? Once we know this time, that we know that that's how many seconds it stayed in the air. So in order for us to do this, we need to take this, set it equal to zero, and solve for t. So negative 16 t squared plus 64 t equals 0. All right, so we're going to slide and divide. So we're going to slide and multiply this negative 16 times our c. When we do that, that creates t squared plus 64 t plus 0. Our c is 0 times negative 16. 
So now we are looking for two numbers that multiply and give me 60 and give me 0. And they need to combine to make 64. Easiest is 0 times 64. 0 plus 64 is still 64. So that means t plus 64, t plus 0. Right, now I'm going to divide by the number I used to slide. And hopefully things reduce. 64 divided by negative 16 is negative 4. 0 divided by 16 is 0. Okay, so now this kind of imitates this. So set each equal to 0. So t is equal to 4, or t is equal to 0. So that means as well that here's when our rocket began taking off, and this is when our rocket touched the ground again. So that means that the rocket stayed in the air for 4 seconds. I'm going to show you a different way in a couple of seconds and how to do the same work in a different way and how to rephrase this same final answer. So this is actually a different method to do this. 16, negative 16 and 64 do have a common factor. They both share 16 as well as 18. So negative 16 times what is negative 16 t squared? Just t. 64 divided by 16, that is four. All right, all I did was just factor out a negative 16 t. That is still equal to zero. So, Set each equal to zero, so negative 16t equals zero, or t minus four equals to zero. t is equal to zero, or t is equal to four. So that means that the rocket will only be four seconds off the ground. Again, this is where it starts, right? And t equals to zero, it's in the ground. After we get to 0 0.001 second, it's now officially off the air, and then it's going to be back on the ground after four seconds.